Hi friends, welcome back to Water Nerds. Uh, I'm here with Annalise and our policy nerd and we're gonna talk about some stuff today that um, really want you to know. Listen, when it comes down to it, what we're gonna talk about today is why bottled water is not gonna help any water quality issue you may be having uh, where you live. It's, it's not really the solution. Um, and we're gonna talk about why. So, welcome to Water Nerds. So it seems like every time there's a water quality crisis anywhere in the country, the very first thing that people uh, or cities and municipalities or whatever run to do, we got to get as much bottled water to this place as possible. Places like Flint. I can't imagine how many bottles of water probably got shipped through Flint. Uh, to Chicago, to New York City, if 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 a school um, is found to have you know lead in the pipes and you know and lead at the tap, it's like oh we're giving them bottled water, bottled water. <sighs> Here's a trick and something you may not know: um, bottled water sources are the same as tap water sources, uh, <laughs> and there's also the regulation. It's they're not regulated. We're going to talk more about that. Um, but if you notice, like if you see the packaging on water bottles and you see like like these beautiful mountain ranges with snow or you see this beautiful natural uh, setting or habitat with trees and birds flying everywhere. And it's just like your water must be just uh, just from the mouth of the heavens pouring gently into your bottle. And that's what you're drinking. That's not what you're drinking. Um, so we're going to talk about that today. So, uh, Annalise, this, um, why is, I, I guess, what, why is bottled water, why do people believe that bottled water is kind of uh, the reason, you know, the, the, the way out when it comes to water yeah. quality? I mean, I think you summed it up pretty well, the, you know, deceptive packaging. People mm -hmm. think that it's from this source away from where they're living, away from their municipal tap water mm -hmm. and like, you know, exactly like the pristine mountain snow right, melt. Right. Um, and that's just not the case. So uh, the FDA regulates uh, bottled water mm -hmm. and bottled water is allowed to come from municipal taps, groundwater aquifers. There's a very broad, you know, selection of right. where uh, bottled water companies can source their water. but. Like I said, the biggest one is municipal tap water. They can package and sell that, and it's still, you know, it's legal. So they're, <laughs> so they can sell. Ta they're t selling tap water. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you said the FDA regulates yeah. bottled water. How? What is? What does that look like? Yeah. So I think people assume that it's regulated more stringently than tap water. Mm -hmm. And the regulations are actually identical if you put them side to side with the exception of lead. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just because in the production process, you know, tap water should never come in contact with lead pipes right. in the same way that municipal tap water might in an older municipality. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the, the regulations are identical. and that is surprising to people because they think, oh, you know, this industry must be more heavily regulated mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it's a consumer product and that it's just not the case. Yikes. Yeah. So what are the, uh, you know, I've heard a lot about um, just kind of the dangers of like plastic and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And like, so I'm, I'm wondering what are like the impacts um, on the environment mm -hmm. when it comes to bottled water? Yeah, so similar to all plastics, um, plastic water bottles are a source of, or they're made from petroleum, which is a fossil fuel and a non-renewable resource. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And then also just the environmental impact of having all this plastic in our oceans mm -hmm. and our lakes and rivers and streams and just cluttering everywhere. And as that plastic breaks down, it can release some pretty harmful contaminants. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh. yeah, there's a, a statistic here um, by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, it says that the ocean will contain more plastic by weight than fish by the year 2050. So that's just insane. Wow. Yeah. And so is it because, w does recycling or anything help with this? Like, is it because we're not recycling or? I mean, there are flaws in the recycling industry too. And yeah, a lot of states don't have the um, like five cent buyback or mm -hmm. whatever for mm -hmm. or the uh, redemption cost. So 
there's that. There's not really an incentive to recycle in a lot of states. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Yeah. And it's just easier for people to, you know, toss it in the trash or toss it in wherever. And if you're in a coastal community and there is a flood, you know, that waste in those trash cans isn't necessarily all that secure. Right, right. So you talked about how um, uh, tap water and, and, and bottled water are basically regulated the same mm -hmm. way and that we're basically drinking tap water when you drink bottled water. So I feel like an ethical issue comes up here when it comes to like the makers, like the big guys, mm -hmm. uh, the, the manufacturers, I guess, or bottlers of this water, I feel like there's an ethical issue, like a, a like a water usage type of mm -hmm. thing. Is there any, like, what's yeah. the deal with that? Yeah, so exactly. Um, obviously these big companies, mm -hmm. they have a lot of money and they can purchase these deep water, dr deep water drills that, you know, a small municipality can't Mm -hmm. So if you're in a drought prone area like somewhere in California and you know a big bottling company can purchase this drill and extract water in a drought prone area that a municipality can't, mm -hmm. I mean there's an ethical dilemma right there when they, you know, a, mus a municipality is... So the, and, that's their, and that's that municipality's water source, right? It could be or, it could be. or not, you know, they, these big companies can purchase land and then extract water from that land and it might be on like a, you know, a reservation mm -hmm. or just a municipality, so. Do they get permission to do this? Yeah, it's riparian water usage rights, which are extremely old and outdated, but we still follow them. <sighs> Yikes. Mm -hmm. So, in its way, it kind of strips the water rights away from whatever that that community is. If, like, it's who has the drill and who can access the water. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> wow. So, are there solutions? Like, you know, I think we're so accustomed to drinking, you know, of course, drinking bottled water was a fancy thing 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, it's nothing. You can buy a 24-pack of water for three bucks. Yeah. So, like, what's what are the solutions mm -hmm. uh, at this point? Yeah. So, I think number one is that bottled water can be a great short-term solution. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not a long-term solution, and I, I think that that needs to be something that, you know, we start to steer away from just because all of the environmental and ethical impacts that bottled water has. Mm -hmm. um, but I think also listen to boil advisories. So if your municipality has a boil advisory, you know, that might be a great opportunity to drink bottled water or, you know, boil your water, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, if you live in an area that's experiencing, you know, high levels of lead like we saw in Flint, purchase a filter that removes lead, you know? So that, that, that makes be, sense. Yeah. So if you hear about, you know, uh, depending on where you live, if you hear about like uh, increased arsenic, increased lead, mm -hmm. get filters that remove that stuff. Yeah. And, you know, um, you know, big in the news right now, PFAS or chromium-6 or... Mm -hmm. 1,4 dioxin, whatever it is, um, get something that yeah. gets that out of your water so you can, because ultimately, quote me on this, ultimately you end up spending more money, right, on bottled water. Yeah, depending on the brand. Depending on the it, brand yeah, and how much. Exactly. Okay. Wow. <sighs> so the takeaway, <laughs> um, once again, well, I think we've said this a few times before. It's, it's falling back on the, on the consumer mm -hmm. um, to stay in the know and to pay attention to what's going on with your water um, and to take the necessary steps to do what you need to do in order to, um, you know, do the best, make the best decisions for you and your family. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you so much for watching. Listen, if you have any questions, you are always welcome to reach out to us. Uh, you can reach us at hello at hydraviv.com. Or if uh, you can visit our website at www.hydraviv.com, click on the live chat feature, and you're t you'll talk to a live person um, every single time, and one who is more than happy uh, to answer any questions that you have about water or water quality uh, in your area. So thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Annalise, for Thank the insight you. and information. We'll see you soon.